There's two very distinctive ways to approach a small still water like Diva Springs. One way is the most common way you probably see, which is what Alan's been doing, which I'm just having a bit of a pop on now. It's what we call chucking and chancing. So we're blind casting, we can't actually see the fish that we're looking to catch. And unfortunately at the moment the water's got a little bit of colour to it, which is making life a little bit difficult, but there's a fish there. We'll pop that fly just in front of it. It's just gone to have a look. Oh, it decided he didn't like it. So this is the other method really, which is known more widely just as stalking. So what we're actually doing is we're trying to spot a fish and target an individual fish. Rather than just having a bit of luck on what size and what type of fish we catch, we're stalking you. Spend your day walking around the lakes until you actually see a fish that you want to catch. Now ordinarily this water here at Diva Springs is absolutely crystal clear. But unfortunately today as I say there's a little bit of colour in which is making life a bit difficult. Nice big brownie just rolled there. Making life quite tough and a bit of cloud cover too. This is where a good set of Polaroids really come into their own. But with the, uh, the stalking we're trying to spot that fish and work out roughly how deep that fish is in the water column and how fast it's moving where we think it's moving to and then place our fly in front of that fish so that roughly with the sink rate of the fly that fly gets in front of that fish just at the point where you're guessing that it swum to so it's, uh, it's not exactly an exact science but that kind of plop and drop you get from the fly as it's dropping down through the water very enticing for a fish so we're not using particularly big flies but they are quite heavily weighted because we want it to get in and down through the water column quite quickly and then obviously we're looking for the reaction of the fish opening its mouth, flaring its gills and, and engulfing that fly, fingers crossed. You tend to find that you get one of three reactions when you're stalking for fish. They either swim straight at it and they eat it, in which case, well you know the end result of that one. They often rush the fly and at the last minute they just turn away, which often means that they're interested but they don't particularly want that pattern. So try another fly. And then your third and final response is that they just completely spook and disappear altogether, which can often happen, especially if there's a lot of pressure on a fishery, but it's very quiet here today, so there's not really an issue with that. And if that happens and the fish disappears and spooks, then just leave it alone, come back to it in half an hour, 45 minutes, because what you tend to find when these still waters is that the trout will set up a, a patrol route once they've been in a day or two, and they might pick, say, peg over there, a peg here and a peg over there and they'll, they'll do a lap. So you can stand in the same place and maybe every five, ten minutes the same fish will come back around again. So just because you have missed the first shot at it, be patient, wait for that fish to come back around again. Quite often when I'm stalking a, a water I can go most of the day without even making a cast until I see the fish that I actually want to catch, whether that be a, a big fish, whether it be a brown, um, and then you're actually targeting that specific fish, whereas what Alan's been doing is this more traditional sort of blind casting, chuck and chance, casting out, pulling back, not really targeting a specific fish and just hoping for the best. But so far he's 1-0 up on me, so he's doing something better than I am.